Hello everyone, my name is Anisha and I'm part of the Claw India team. Today I'm going to do a designer workshop on how to create a realistic leather garment. I hope you enjoy this workshop and thank you for tuning in. The first thing that we would require for a realistic leather garment look, we would require the fabric. So I'm going into the fabric library over here and I will be selecting the leather lambskin and I'm going to drag and drop it over here. And when I simulate, you will see those little changes in the drape of the jacket and it will be according to how a leather material looks. Like. And I'm going to add one of these um, textures that we have created and it's like a scan of a leather material and then it has been created into a tileable repeat. So once you have created this tile, I'm just going to drag and drop it over here. And you can see right now it looks like this. It's very raw. So I'm just going to select the leather lambskin over here. And going to the material type, I'm going to change it into leather. I don't need a very intense normal map. I can just keep it 10. And this is the grain structure of it. So right now it is a bit bigger. I'm just going to reduce the size of the texture and I'm going to use the edit texture for that and reduce it slightly. So I'm going to make it 90 and this is how it's going to look. Uh, to make it a bit more darker, I'm just going to add a color to it. I'm just going to add a grayish tone to this. Once we have made changes to the fabric, let's look at the seams. So how do we select these seams by using the edit sewing tool? And after that, if I look it into property editor, I can see it says 3D sim line. So we need to go to the hardware and trims library. And under that, we will see a folder called seam line. And in there, we have two different options. This is the one which is uh, by default added into this. But there is another one which looks like this. So for leather garments, I usually use these. But right now you can see all the seams are quite raised. So we do not want them to be raised. We actually want them to be um, the opposite. Like we wanted to create a depression. So instead of having a positive 10 or intensity 10, I'm going to keep the value to minus 20. And I'm going to leave the thickness to as it is. And you can see that it... Uh, create that depression and the normal map of the seam line, 3D seam line that is created, it has that uh, dotted look. So it is a very subtle change, but this will help you give your leather garment quite a realistic look. So if you look at the zipper here right now, you can see it has been stretched a bit, reset to trim fusible rigid. And when I simulate, you will see that it will hold its shape and it will not stretch from both the sides and it will look like this. So I'm going to do the same thing for all the zippers that we have on this garment by selecting all of them. And I'm going to make the same, add the same preset over here to all these uh, zippers, which is trim fusible rigid. And since we have already uh, selected all of the zippers, let me also add the texture for the zipper tape. So I'm going to use a Vizlon zipper texture for this jacket. And I'm just going to quickly add it over here. And I'm just going to make the intensity 50. And I'm going to make the material type either plastic or metal. Along with the tape, I'm just going to select the zipper puller sliders as well and make a few changes to those as well. And in the new version of um, Clo, you, can, you must have noticed that when you select metal, in the metal presets, there are some finishes which are already available. Now, uh, let me select the make the changes to my buttons as well. So let me go into the object browser and select the snap button. And I already have created a texture for this. Yeah, and we have the uh, texture of the rivets as well. I'm starting with the basic single needle top stitch, which I've just uh, already created and saved. And I'm going to add this single needle top stitch 
in a lot of different areas of the jacket so uh, let's start i'm going to add this on the center front Okay, and that's it for all the, this single needle top stitch. Uh, there is one more single needle top stitch which is going to be closer at 1 by 16th of an inch. And I'm going to use that for um, my zippers. Uh, now uh, I'm going to add the double needle top stitch as you can see here and I'm going to add this to only few areas which require that. So I've added all the top stitches and I'm just going to simulate so that my zipper falls into place. So I'm selecting my edit top stitch tool and I'm going to select um, all the top stitches except the one on the waistband uh, at the bottom and I have selected all of them and I'm going to right click on the top stitch and add an internal line on the top. In the property editor I'm going to just switch on the elastic and I'm going to make the ratio 97. For some areas like the back, I don't need the elastic ratio to be so low. I can keep it 99. I'm going to make the same changes for my buttons as well. So here you can see that the snap button looks as if it's just stuck on the surface, but it doesn't look as if it's been pushed into the material. And here, because it is a button, I'm going to use a internal ellipse tool and I'm going to just create a small circle around this button. I'm going to reposition it a bit yeah so once I've done this you can see it's over here and I'm going to add an elastic and change the ratio to 97 and there is one more thing that I will add to this internal shape is that I'm going to change the fold angle of this to 270 So I'm going to show you how it looks when I make these changes that uh, I'm going to simulate this. So it looks as if the button has been pushed into the material. So I'm going to uh, select the same circle and I'm just going to copy paste it on all the areas where I have my button. Now let's talk about this seam over here. So whenever we are sewing a leather jacket or leather garment, uh, there would be areas where you create a top stitch on top, whereas there will be areas, uh, there will be seams which do not have that top stitch on top. So this is the um, seam where there will be no top stitch here. So right now, if I do not add any top stitch, it looks, um, it doesn't look natural to a leather garment. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to select the sewing of this seam on both the sides and I'm going to make the fold angle to 270. 
and when I simulate, it will slightly fold a bit to make it look a bit more natural how it looks on a uh, leather garment. And after this, I'm going to go, I'm looking at the top stitch on the center front and I'm going to add puckering over here. So let me select the puckering tool and using that, I'm just selecting this area and I'm adding the puckering, default puckering over here. It's not characteristic of a leather garment. So let, uh, let us customize it a bit more. I'm going to click on the default puckering and here we have the normal map and the normal map that is over here is of cotton. So I'm going to click on this material and I'm going to select leather and it will change the normal map to a leather material. So right now we just have a normal map, but um, we can also add a texture to our puckering. So I am going to show you the puckering that I'm going to, um, texture that I'm going to add to this puckering. So you can see on my screen, this is the puckering texture that I'm going to add. And it has that uh, dots in the center. So that is because whenever you sew a leather material, it actually punctures the leather and it creates these tiny holes. So that's why it will look much more realistic when you add a puckering texture like this. So I'm going to drag and drop it over here on the texture of my puckering. And here I can see how it looks, but it is still not matching the area of the top stitch it is far away from it so i'm going to change the specification so density can be 80 and the width can be 2 right so this way i will be able to match the puckering and the top stitch together and right now uh, it looks very stark white so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to select the color over here and select the color picker tool and match it to the leather that I have. So it is somewhere in the same tint and shade. And uh, I'm going to make it slightly lighter. It's not going to be, so this much is enough and I can click okay. And that is the, that is the top stitch that I will have. Okay, the width seems to be a lot. So I'm going to make it one. So uh, once I've made, customized my, puckering according to my top stitch i'm just going to add it in all the areas where this puckering would be relevant so these were some simple steps in achieving a realistic leather garment i hope you enjoyed this workshop and thank you for joining in